Redis can help solve Twitter's biggest problem. No, I'm not talking about the business screw up, though Redis can probably help with that too. I'm talking about how Redis can help us edit tweets at massive scale. Just to be clear, this is a hypothetical. It's just a way to demonstrate an awesome Redis feature that you guys absolutely need to know about. Spoiler alert, we're gonna learn what's a right through cache. Now that I've completely screwed up the intro, let's dive right in. Let's say we have with us the chief twerp of Twitter. Uh, I mean twit. Huh. It's become the same thing. Point is, we have some sort of a celebrity on our app and whatever he tweets out will be consumed by a gajillion people. This is how a simplified system architecture would look like. You first write or create a tweet in the database. Almost immediately, you are swarmed with millions of read requests which causes your database to explode. To solve this, you pull out the oldest trick in the book, introducing Redis as a cache. Yay! So most of your read requests will be loaded from the cache instead of your database. Everyone's happy. Oh no, this isn't the problem I was talking about. I'm getting there now, I promise. The big question here is, when do you write data in your cache? An easy fix would be to load the data whenever we read it from the database. So assuming the tweet has already been written in the database, we get a read request at T0. We first check with the cache at T1 which will result in a miss, because at this point, the cache is empty. This is cue for us to get the data from the database. So at T2, we do just that. <laughs> T2. The database is much slower than our cache, so it takes some time. And at T3, it gives us our tweet back. At T4, we write the tweet into the cache and we send back a response immediately at T5. Now, if we get another request, we don't really need to go beyond T1 to process it. We can now serve data from our cache. There is one problem in our newly designed system. What happens if we get the second request before we reach T4? What if we get a million requests before we get the time to populate our cache? Our database will explode before we can cache anything. But hey, no one can go viral this quickly, right? Right? Hold that thought for now. Let's move on to look at the next scenario where the same problem is gonna become much worse. Let's assume the tweet has been posted and it's safely cached. Now what if our chief twerp wants to edit his tweet? Maybe he made a mistake. Maybe it's a typo. Maybe he accidentally bought the wrong company. Who knows? The point is, to edit this tweet, we need to make sure we update the value not just in the database, but also in the cache. Simply invalidating the cache won't work, because you know, the moment traffic hits the database, it will explode. Okay, we need to stop doing that. The requirement of reliably updating the tweet in the database and the cache is the main problem we are trying to solve today. Whoa, that took a lot more time than I had previously anticipated. Now, there are multiple ways to go about solving this problem. First, we can go completely event sourced. In this scenario, whenever we get a request to edit a tweet, instead of making a database operation, we can simply dump the data in a messaging queue like Kafka or SQS. Once that is done, we can have two jobs to update the cache and the database asynchronously. This is actually a great solution, but I wanna talk about how Redis can solve this problem, so I need you to ignore this one. The next solution we have is using CDC or Change Data Capture to generate events directly from the database. We have already covered this technique before on this channel. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. So here's how it works. Whenever we get an edit tweet request, we will go ahead and update the database directly. The difference in this case is that we'll have a CDC engine like Debezium sitting beside our database. Debezium will monitor the database logs for changes and can create an event for the update operation. We can use this event to reliably update the data in our cache. Now, while the solution is amazing and it will definitely work, building and maintaining a CDC system for a database is no easy task. Also, this technique first updates the database and then the cache. This might not be so great for the create a tweet scenario where we might need the data to be in the cache as soon as it's written in the primary database. Most importantly, 
This video is for showing off Redis. So forget I ever mentioned this. You are probably super mad at me. Don't worry, we're gonna get to Redis in just a minute. It's not like I'm gonna waste more time by asking you to subscribe and hit that like button, right? I mean, even though it like really helps the channel. Don't worry, I won't do that. So let's see how Redis can save Twitter by solving this problem. Finally, here's how it works. Whenever we get a request to edit a tweet, we first update the Redis cache and immediately send back a response. This makes writing or updating tweets as fast as reading them. So how will the primary database get updated? Well, Redis has got an amazing feature called key space notification. What this does is, whenever we update a key in Redis, an event will automatically be published in Redis pops up. We can write some custom code to subscribe to this event and then update our database. All this is similar to doing CDC, but thanks to this feature, there are no additional moving parts that we need to manage. Isn't that awesome? This architectural pattern is called a write-through cache. Quick note, Keyspace notification currently uses a fire and forget model which isn't really that reliable. But hey, there's an open issue on GitHub to fix it. Meanwhile, you can use Redis modules to bridge this gap yourself. Well, this is how Redis will save Twitter. Explaining this pattern is pretty much the entire point of this video. Now, if you found Redis key space notifications to be a pleasant surprise, you should absolutely check out this video where we explore everything else Redis has to offer. Do like, share, and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful. And don't forget, I am your tech bot here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.